Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. All right, folks, Roland Martin here broadcasting live from Charlotte, North Carolina, here for the NBA All-Star Game. Happy, happy Valentine's Day to all of you, folks. Uh, a stunning story. Lawyer Michael Avenatti. Remember, he was the attorney who represented Stormy Daniels. Well, he says that he is in possession of a videotape showing singer R. Kelly engaging in sexual activity with a 14-year-old girl. Avenatti has shared that tape with CNN. They report they've actually watched the tape. Apparently, it is a 45-minute video of R. Kelly performing a variety of sex acts on a 14-year-old girl. Now... You cannot tell uh, by uh, the footage that she's 14. Here's a statement that CNN posted on their website. The newly unearthed footage, which lasts 42 minutes and 45 seconds, is clear and explicit. There are two scenes on the video, one apparently in a living room and another in a bedroom. A naked man who appears to be R. Kelly is seen performing multiple sex acts with the girl. She is heard calling him daddy multiple times. It is impossible to know her age just from the video. Six times the girl refers to her genitalia as 14 years old. Now keep in mind, R. Kelly uh, was acquitted in a previous case of having sex with an underage girl. Now, that particular video was circulated all across Chicago and all across the country. In fact, when I was the editor of blackamericaweb.com, that video was sent to our office and I actually saw that video. The jury in that case did not say it wasn't R. Kelly on the video. They said it was R. Kelly. The, the reason he was acquitted is because the jury could not ascertain in that video as to whether or not the young girl was indeed under age. And so that case uh, went to court. Now, uh, Art Kelly's attorney has told CNN he was not aware of this development when it comes to this particular video. Uh, but Avenatti has said he has turned over the tape to the Cook County District Attorney's Office. And of course, a DA in Cook County covers Chicago. Uh, talk about a stunning, stunning development here. I want to bring in our panel, our guest, Dr. Greg Carr, Chair, Department of Afro-American Studies at Howard University, uh, Teresa Lundy, founder of TML Communications, and Pastor Shannon Wright, third vice chair, Maryland GOP. Teresa, I'll start with you. When it comes to this video, here's what we know. We have the, the, the huge documentary that aired on Lifetime that had several of R. Kelly's accusers, women who say that they were involved in relationships with him. It talked about his long history of being engaged with underage girls. This, to have this video that Avenatti uh, somehow received and then taken to the DA, this could be a game changer because again, on this video, CNN is reporting that you hear R. Kelly and the woman referencing her genitalia as being that of a 14-year-old. It's a dis disgusting disgrace um, to see this still going on year after year when everyone, um, even inside the African-American community, knows that R. Kelly is guilty as charged. We've known he has a problem, and for some reason, he is still able to grab a hold of these young women's lives, torment them, and disgrace them. So. I'm not surprised that this video is now coming out. It wasn't a shocker moment, um, nor was it a lot of shocker to those looking at the blogs and reading some of the social media posts. But I think more so now it's, it's really closing in where R. Kelly needs to account, account for his acts and justice needs to prevail. Lifetime did a very, very good piece um, indicating um, the stories of some of those mothers um, and family members of those women who are a part of that detail. Although I feel like they did leave something out, which is um, an actual an account of some of those uh, women um, that are still being led in that cult, as they describe. So I would have loved to see a little bit more. But from that lifetime presentation, it looks like the attorney general de decided to take the next steps and hopefully that next steps ends up with an indictment and a conviction for R. Kelly. 
Shannon, here's the deal, though. We do not know when this video was shot. So we don't know that. We don't know if it's an old video, if it's a new video. But uh, the reality, though, is that that doesn't matter because if this video uh, was shot in, let's say, the last five or so years, you still have a question of jurisdiction. Now, they still have to ascertain of the age of the young woman on the video. We do know from the previous case, the young woman who was in that video, she had some family members who testified, uh, like we interviewed the uh, Sparkle on this show. Uh, some family members testified that it, she was indeed underage. Then you had Sparkle's brother who testified that that was not his niece on that video. And so it's a whole lot that still has to be done uh, before R. Kelly, uh, before the Cook County DA can take this to a grand jury and things along those lines. But this new development certainly should cause concern for R. Kelly and his freedom. Absolutely. I mean, you can't continue to press the envelope and do the things that you do and think that you're going to get away with it when you're in such a public arena. Um, my husband and I raised two daughters, and I cannot, I, I feel very much for those mothers because I, I, it has to be awful and difficult to know who it is, what happened, and where, and not be able to prove it to get justice for your children. And, you know, as a parent, you want to not only protect your own, but you want to keep this from happening to someone else's. So it, it seems to me as an, enough is enough. We, somebody's got to put a stop to this somehow. Uh, Greg Carr, um, now, what you also have here is a difference for R. Kelly economically. Um, according to that Lifetime documentary, uh, and based upon what I know, living in Chicago for six years from 2004 to 2010, that R. Kelly used his vast resources to pay off a significant number of settlements. Uh, you also had people who said when that trial came up, he sent families out of the country uh, for a number of months to avoid uh, them being interrogated by police. He's been stopped from many places from performing. Uh, you've had some places that refuse to grant him licenses to perform. You have his record label that's dropped him. You have streaming services uh, also uh, cutting back on his music. And so his financial lifeline has been impacted. And so that could also be a difference maker because he can't necessarily be able to tap the same financial resources this time that he did before. No, but I mean, uh, Roland, as you know, we're not just talking about the United States. Uh, the, and now there have been a couple of countries, and at least one country, R. Kelly, you know, has had concerts canceled. But the last I heard yesterday, uh, his concerts in Germany may be moved to a larger venue because they've already sold out the venue he's supposed to appear in. Perhaps this becomes a Roman Polanski uh, situation where he just simply leaves the country to evade uh, prosecution. But one thing we know for sure, R. Kelly is not only an individual who is now facing a charge, and of course it will be interesting to see whether Avenatti's client uh, washes out, uh, which of course is this man who says he's known R. Kelly and the girl for years and can kind of corroborate this evidence. But uh, you know, R. Kelly, the individual, is one thing. R. Kelly, symbolic of a much larger situation, is, is something altogether different. We're in a different time now in this country. The Me Too movement, uh, the question of evidentiary burden speaks to a larger issue. Are we going to be a different type of society now? And R. Kelly, if he can leave this country and maybe evade prosecution, might, we might be faced with another question, which is how far is the reach of this movement to kind of open this society up to these, to these, these types of situations? Well, first of all, you make a great point because we know that Roman Polanski, uh, who skipped out uh, on his rape trial in the 70s, and when the jury was deliberating, uh, he has not returned to the United States uh, since, even though many folks in Hollywood have continued to work for him. Uh, he won an Oscar right. uh, for a movie he directed. Uh, and you've had people in Hollywood say that he should be allowed to return. Uh, and so, yeah, that's an issue. So I wouldn't be surprised if Kim Fox, who was the Cook County DA, tries to move very quickly to potentially even keep him uh, trying to get his passport to keep him from being able to travel overseas. And so we certainly be watching to see how this story develops 
uh, in the near future. All right, folks, back to our Roland Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Calling all HBC alumni, students, as well as uh, leaders. Uh, Ford is looking to improve mobility in HBCU communities, uh, and they are offering up a $25,000 mobility challenge grant. Now, here's a, the winning program will receive a grant of up to $25,000 to implement their proposal. The deadline to apply, folks, is March 31st, 2019. Uh, we want you to go to fgb.life, fgb.life for more information and to apply. Don't forget the deadline is March 31st, 2019, and Ford goes further in our community. And we certainly thank uh, Ford Cares for being a partner here at Roller Martin Unfiltered and for them supporting uh, HBCUs. Now back to your Roller Martin Unfiltered video.